Leonardo Botti. Um, he is um, Director of Business Development at Power One. Power One is the second largest, I think, inverter company in the world, and you offer power optimizers, but you also offer micro inverters and you also offer string inverters. So, and yeah, and yes, we would like to learn when does it make sense to use power optimizers? When does it make sense to maybe use other products? How many power optimizers have you installed last year? Mr. Botti, yep. how is it with Power One? Yeah, and in our case, we have never shipped any optimizer into the market because we are still working on that project. We have focalized our attention so far uh, on the micro, let's say, on the, on the panel inverter side, on the micro inverters. And the optimizer is in our roadmap. We have already the design, let's say, 99% done, but we have not yet launched the product into the market. We have uh, launched the micro last year, and we have already sold a lot of these ones, which are a slightly different product than the optimizer. Yeah. Okay, it's a different product, but there's one in common. It's a module integrated, or let's say, decentralized electronics, um, which yep. you use. Yep. So yep. Yep. From that point of view, you can also compare them, because there are also some common advantages, like PowerPoint, maximum PowerPoint optimization near the module. Um, so how many have you sold in, in, in terms of megawatts? In terms of megawatts, uh, we have already sold, if I remember well, uh, more than three megawatts so far. In terms of units, I don't remember the number, but uh, you know, the microinverters is supposed to answer to a different uh, needs because it's an inverter. In the case of the optimizer, the optimizer is an accessory to an inverter which is already installed. For this reason, it may happen that uh, several uh, of the uh, half gigawatt of your optimizer uh, delivered by SolarEdge have been uh, used in installations where already our inverters were used, for instance. I mean, you sell also string inverters also for the residential market. Um, do you share some opinion that there's such high volume potential for optimizers? Uh, honestly speaking, uh, we have not the same figures and this is also the reason why we have slowed down a bit our activities on the optimizer side because we believe that uh, and the markets, uh, all the markets, also the residential ones, are now going to uh, struggle because of the prices. And uh, once we are going down with the, with the prices for the whole system, th here we have an issue for uh, the applications of the optimizer. Because even though we can get uh, uh, some advantages from the harvesting standpoint, we have some disadvantages. One is definitely the price, which we are going to have on top of an installation which is already up and running. And the other one is the fact that now the tariffs are disappearing everywhere. And the costs are very, very crucial to make uh, the right math for the PV system either in the residential and also in the large-scale projects. For this reason, in our opinion, for the future, uh, the technology, which is already mature in the residential and uh, large-scale projects, uh, doesn't need this kind of extra support as it was supposed to be so far, primarily because the financial maths changed drastically and will change even more in the future. But in your calculations, what is the price for an optimizer? When if you would produce it. Yeah, in this case, you should, you should ask to, yeah, <laughs> to our friend, but you know, it's not a matter of the price, because even though an optimizer could cost 50 euros, for instance, or 20 euros, or it, you know, it's not a matter of price. It's the matter that you are going to apply something on top of a cost of an installation, which is already very uh, expensive compared to the returns that we had so far. So far, we were able to provide to our customers, thanks to the tariffs primarily, returns which were very, very generous. Now, this is not going to happen. But isn't it at the very end, if, if you optimize on return on invest? I mean, you can, can also argue, you don't uh, uh, discuss that you don't want to optimize on return on invest. But let's, let's say we want to optimize on return on invest. Then we have to see what profit I have from the optimizer and yep. what, does, what it costs. So, yeah. Um, Therefore, the price does take into account, though. Yeah, in, in our case, as I said, we have not yet launched our product for this reason. It is, it is too early. Um, in that case, would you say go and buy optimizers? But, um, as I said before, our opinion is uh, slightly different. And I think uh, here we need to make one step back. 
So far, uh, we have been all excited by the micro and optimizer technology because we saw the opportunities to get really the best harvesting uh, thanks to the capillarity of these kind of technologies, both. But uh, especially if we are looking to the uh, residential markets, here we have a major weakness of that technology in general, which is the following. If we are going to install uh, a certain number of panels in the roof of a standard house, it could be 10 panels, 20 panels, something like that. And if we are going to have uh, both micro, either, uh, you know, optimizer, we have uh, some costs to add in case of the optimizer or some uh, special prices because for the micros where we need to consider not just the capex, we need to look primarily to the opex because once we have a failure in an optimizer or in a micro which are installed on the roof, we need to have uh, not just uh, the math done based on the cost of the units, which is logical for a string inverter because it's located most likely in the garage or in a terrace, in a place which is very, very easily achievable by the technicians. In the case of the uh, micro or optimizer, in the majority of the cases, we have these units installed in the roof. And if we need to go up to the roof, maybe at 10, 15 or more meters, we need to have an elevator, we need to have a lift, and all these kind of tools cost a fortune. For this reason, even though we have a certain minor cost to add on the capex, well, but we need to look to the opex. And once you have one single failure, you are risking the, the whole uh, business plan, let me say, because of that. Again, as before, unfortunately, our positions here are slightly different because First of all, we as a Power One, we have already developed all our inverters, uh, the majority of our inverters, without electrolytic capacitors from uh, several years. For this reason, we are already reducing this kind of failure rate by a lot. And uh, second, all our inverters are, in any case, uh, compliant with all the certifications, with all the standards in all the places, from Australia up to uh, Estonia. You're now talking about microinverters? I'm talking about string inverters. And in this case, as uh, you know, if you said that the majority of your sales have been done in a residential side, residential side, it means something which is located in the roof. And if you are in the roof, the risks or the possible uh, potential risks, which I mentioned before, are always there. And even though you have reduced the number of electrolytic capacitors, or even though you have excluded the capacitors from the optimizer technology, which, as I said, we have already done on the string inverters from several years, uh, you are, in any case, applying electronic components in a roof, and especially in the summertime, these parts are supposed to be at 60, 70 degrees, and, you know, that is, in a, an environment which is very nasty for the electronic I, devices. I, that, that is logical. I mean, now I have to ask you, but you, nevertheless, of all these difficulties, you sell microinverters. So why, what is, from your point of view, the advantage of microinverters, and why don't you have this reliability problem there? The, in the microinverter technology, there is another aspect, which we have not yet uh, touched. In the microinverter, we have an opportunity, which is uh, a very... Um, which is necessary, especially in uh, places like the UK, for instance, where we have roofs with many, many different shadows, many different inclinations. For this reason, even though we have uh, 10 or 12 modules, PV modules, and even though we are using some of our uh, string inverters with even double MPPTs at a very low power, but if we have uh, different inclinations, different shadows, we are forced to go to the micro technology and in that case we can leverage on the capabilities of the micro. But we, if we have already the inverter, apply the optimizer, again it will be an additional cost which will not make a big difference bringing instead all the weaknesses of what the modular the, technology. What is the cost of the, I mean, now is, I mean the argument now is that the cost of the optimizers plus inverter is higher than the cost of the micro inverter. Um, be because that, if I understand you right, because that is why you, you, you are in favor of microinverters in that mm, case. No, I think that uh, uh, based on uh, his uh, assumptions, the 0 0.1 euro per watt, in this case, the cost of the optimizer plus the string inverter should be lower than the micro. Should be lower than the micro. But again, is a, 
is a different technology. And why would you then uh, um, for um, recommend the the, 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 the English client um, to, to use the microinverter instead yeah, of the optimizer? Yeah, because if you have a, a small uh, uh, roofs with uh, two different inclinations, with uh, three, four panels per side, and if you have an inverter which is a two kilowatts inverter with uh, an MPPT only, even though you are going to apply the optimizer, but the optimization in such a very different cases cannot be like with the micro. With the micro, you are optimizing individually the performances. Yes. For our opinion, the, the, the picture is slightly different because even though the components are coming from uh, automotive technology, the conditions where these kind of devices, electronic devices, are supposed to stay for a life are very, very difficult to support. That is one point. The other one uh, is uh, related to the opportunity to really optimize every kind of modules in every kind of conditions. I'm not in agreement at all about what he said because if we have uh, two different facades, I'm not even mentioning more than two, but if we have uh, an English roof with uh, uh, windows, with uh, abbey, with uh, chimneys, with a lot of shadows, and if we have one panel which is completely shaded and the other one which is completely on the, on the sun, there are no possibilities to get uh, the same harvesting from an inverter plus optimizer than two microinverters. That, that is, you know, this is uh, not just theory, this is uh, the reality. If we look about the microinverters, my opinion are completely different for the micro technology. I think at the moment we are around 1% of the market for the micro technology and I think we'll go probably to 2-3%. In the case of the optimizer, we cannot combine the two things because there are no studies capable to show such a numbers. Or uh, combining micro with the optimizer in terms of market share is wrong or is not possible. I believe that so far the capabilities and the opportunities for the optimizer were much higher than now because so far the return of investments, especially for the large projects, but also for the residential ones, were very, very uh, generous now. And for the future, we are going to situations where uh, all these numbers, all these math are much more complicated. And uh, there are even places where uh, the governments are looking to uh, retroactive taxes. We have seen already. And, the, and under such uh, circumstances, it's very... Uh, difficult to think that people will invest additional money on such installations just to get uh, a bit more at the end of the year. Okay.